big house. And um, for whatever reason, the general had five or six hours before he was going to be back. And I could do whatever I wanted for five, six hours. Uh, I chose to walk across the street from the White House and see what was in the neighborhood. And I stepped across the street and I stepped into a totally different world. It was a drug war. It was a war zone. And it was all sorts of black people, and I wasn't welcome. And I went about, I don't know, a couple hundred feet, really. And I just turned around and walked back because I knew that, like, you know, all these broken windows and busted out windows and people standing around loitering and stuff. And, you know, it scared me. And I knew what drug prohibition did. And as I get older and I come to Abbotsford, I see the same thing. I see the drug war coming to town. And people have to... Um, stop boo-booing the idea that, you know, this is a bad thing. Um, hey, as it pertains, I mean, I know I know what you're saying in a larger example. I'm trying to uh, talk at a more local community level. I mean, uh, going to the bathroom is something that you and I take for granted. I mean, we do it you know, two or three times a day, you know, and it's just one of those things. Uh, but seeing those those dirty paper towels in the bushes there uh, is a perfect example of how we take some of these stuff for granted. And, uh, you know, it, it, on the one hand, it's it's hard to imagine that people are are you know have to uh, uh, stoop them down, stoop down to actually have to, to wipe their ass in the bushes somewhere uh, when you and I can use the toilet and you know especially considering that it's well known that you and I are just uh, one paycheck away from being in a similar circumstances you would think that people would recognize that. Um yeah, there's no compassion in this town if you ask me, and there's no rationale either. Like you know, people poop on my in the front of my door sometimes. And, you know, if I catch him, I tell him to go poop in my neighbor's doorway. Um, <laughs> you know, like it's because, because, I, and I don't feel guilty. Uh, and sometimes, like, uh, and this is a great one. The people over the phone shop will love this. Uh, it, it was there for like a week and a half, you know, and nobody cleaned it up. Wow. Right here on the main street of F and Dean Avenue, uh, right in front of the phone shop, um, there was couple big poop right on the front door for a week and a half. Human poop uh, laid out on the Abbotsford's main drag for a week and a half and no one cleaned it up. Yeah, you know what, I should have took a picture of it, but you know, like, I don't really realize how disgusting some of this stuff is. I walk down here, I, you know, it's not normal running from the cops all the time and avoiding them and stuff, but you know, it, I mean really, now that I'm starting to get a little more comfortable being around here, um, I'm starting to take pictures of some of the things that's going on, and uh, it's very disturbing. Well, we know that you broke us that, that story about the fire in uh, in Abbotsford on Sunday morning. Uh, we were the only uh, local news website to get you know exclusive photos of that uh, particular uh, photo, and that's thanks again to your reporting. Uh, so uh, thank you for that, and of course these updates as we go along with Baldwin Shredder and so forth. These are these are invaluable things. But I think you really brought up an interesting point there, in that you know you. You get around something for so long, and you just start to think, oh, this is normal life. But this is what I'm saying. I think, uh, you know, these stories about Shredder, these stories about, uh, uh, the, you know, this poop on the street, and the bathrooms aren't for regular, or for customers, and the people are forced to crap in the bushes, and, you know, people living in the rail work and in forest encampments where the police hide their badge numbers. To me, it's all crazy. And, you know, to you, I guess it's all part of, you know, another day in Abbotsford. But from the outside looking in, uh, I think we have two different views of the city. Um, well, this is ground zero. This is the ghetto of Abbotsford. And, well, it was until they dispersed the permit through the city, uh, pacing them around, moving them around and stuff. Um, you know, listen, this is, I think people really need to understand what's going on down here with the homeless people in the sense that they don't take their shoes off for weeks because they're afraid somebody will steal them. There's no place for them to sleep. It's just like torture on these people, especially when it's cold out. Uh, if they fall asleep, they'll, they'll die. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, I'm really quite surprised we haven't had more problems than we've had. And I think that a lot of times some of the people they die, uh, they just disappear, and nobody really thinks a whole lot about it. Uh, but, you know, it's really quite uh, the ethnic cleansing going on here in a, you know, in a, in a class, in an economic way. Um, and, and there's, there's, I, I think that if I became mayor, I would not only champion like public bathrooms for the downtown core, the rest of the city, and and require the the city cities and 
North America to do this as part of being civilized. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, but it was interesting. I mean, I, I did a little bit of a we did a story on <laughs> that. One other thing I would do, I would require like the police officers to wear name tags, and and uh, uh, I, I would even publish where the heck they lived at night, uh, <laughs> because you know, like what, see, see, now you're just going too far, Tim. Now you're getting a little carried away. You know what? When I was a kid, the police officers used to live just down the street. Okay? They were part of the community and everybody knew it. And they didn't go out and terrorize you and then go home at night and hide. And that's what these amateur police officers are doing. Is they're terrorizing the people in the community and then they're going home at night in secret and hiding because they're afraid that somebody will come and burn their house down in the middle of the night when they're asleep. And they should definitely be afraid of what they're doing. And that's what, that, that's what people have to understand is that where we're heading is a very bad place. And the only way to really solve the problem is to treat everybody with dignity and act like everybody has a right to the, the resources. Everybody has a right to use that hospital. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you talk about the public bathrooms because I spoke to, I did a bit of research, actually, as, as my job, into the, sort of the public bathroom situation. And apparently there used to be like one of those porta potty things in Jubilee Park but uh, it got burned down by, by someone, and they just said, screw it, we're not going to build any more. And I guess the debate really is, I mean, uh, can you blame them for not wanting to you know, get their stuff burned down? Um, yes, because, like, you know, because some people act that way doesn't mean you have to collectively punish everybody. Okay? That's the first thing. And the second thing is that, you know, if we take away the prohibition, we'll... You know, like we'll take some of the violence and the stupidity out of our uh, our culture, and our our kids won't be vandals and stuff like that. Hopefully, but you know, I don't know who burnt that down. It could have been people who didn't like segregated homeless people hanging in the park, and it could have been vigilantes burning it down. Christian vigilantes, and that's probably more the direction that it happened than the homeless people burn it down. And if they're afraid of people going in there and shooting up and doing drugs in the bathroom, so then give them a big enough welfare check that they can afford to stay in their home and, and figure out how to keep them housed, then you won't have these problems. Right. You know, I, I, I think the problem here is that, you know, the liberals and the federal conservatives, D.C. liberals, they sold us this program of hate and tolerance like work, you know, workfare instead of welfare and stuff like that. Where, you know, we're going to uh, compassionate... Um, welfare or whatever, right. you know, like George Bush, you know, and and it's all bogus. Like you know, sometimes people don't make the smartest decision. No, that's definitely true enough. And I mean, again, I mean, we just kind of, yeah, I think a lot of time I mean, it's easy to look at things through a black and white filter, and uh, you know, and say, well, you know, city councils are a bunch of jerks, and no one cares about the homeless people, and that's why I don't have bathrooms. But you do a little bit of digging, and sometimes there's a logical explanation. I mean. Uh, you know, these, these porta potties aren't cheap, I would imagine. They provide one for the, the people in Jubilee Park. It gets destroyed, and they're kind of like, well, I guess you're SOL now. We've got, we've got people in the, in the community that are, are all asking for money for, for, for school improvement, road improvement, people who actually pay taxes. No, 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 no. no. First of all, like, we don't know who burns the house down. Like, you know, it could have been the vigilante Christians in this town. Now, you've been told by the homeless people. that they're beaten 12 to 15, 20 people at a time. Now, haven't you? Yes, I have. And, and, and you've personally been told that, and there was articles in the newspaper where uh, the homeless guy was chased down and his face was spray-painted green. Yes. Okay? Now, you know, what we're talking about here is that, like, there's some underlying currents of what's going on. And this is what the hate that, you know, the hate, the intolerance that has been harvested by Randy White and Mary Reeves and the other city councilors. But it, so, so it's not possible that maybe, you know, they had to make a decision based on the priorities and uh, they were going to take... You know, uh, what, I, Patricia Ross, uh, I, I can't wait to write letters about all these people and tell you a, a very specific example of how I feel we're getting there. But Patricia Ross made a statement and she said, we're only trying to do what the people want. Well, you know, I guess that's the difference between them and me is... You know, like if, if somebody that the mob stands up and says, you know, uh, hang the homeless people, then city council, Patricia Ross, they turn around and they introduce legislation where the uh, homeless people can't loiter and they encourage the cops to come along and move them along. And they're encouraging the cops to go out there and protect 
communities in this 